Greetings, comrades. I am the Socialist Roaster, and today, when this video gets uploaded, April 15th, April 15th, is a tragic day in human history. No, I'm not talking about tax day, Yoshi. No, not Abraham Lincoln's assassination. And no, I'm not talking about the day I found out my ex-girlfriend was cheating on me. Although all of these events are tragic parts of human history, what I'm talking about in this video today, well, you might have already read the title, is the death of who? Yellowbang. Now, some of you might be asking, who the fuck is who Yellowbang, and why the fuck should I care about his death? Well, for two reasons. One, he's the Chinese version of Mikhail Gorbachev, and two, because of this. Indeed, it was hard at times to grasp that this army was launching into an unarmed civilian population as if charging into battle. From Tiananmen Square, the sound of gunfire sounded like a battle, but it was one-sided. The young man in front of me fell dead. I fell over him. Two others were killed yards away. Two more people lay wounded on the ground near me. What I just showed you was actual footage of the Tiananmen Square Massacre that was recorded by the BBC. So, if any of you are still denying that the Tiananmen Square Massacre happened, I hope those 50 cents are worth it because they're worth jack shit in the US of A and mainland China. When many people think about the Tiananmen Square Massacre, they only think about how it ended. The massacre that happened in June 1989. Unfortunately, not many people know how the Tiananmen Square Massacre started. So, let's dive in into the rule of who, Yellowbang. Young people were singing the international to a background of gunfire. When Hu Yellowbang ruled over mainland China, he was the Chinese version of Mikhail Gorbachev. They both had ideas that challenged the Communist Party's grips in their countries. Both of their families experienced purges. They both strive for economic and political reforms. They both strive for better relations with the West. They both went through a coup d'etat. And they both took baby steps to attain in power in their Communist Party. You know, the usual stuff when a mass murderer is desperately trying to make their own religion that worships them as a god and they so happen to put you on their shit list. <coughs> Mao. <coughs> Stalin. Sorry, sorry. I'm just having an allergic reaction to commie bullshit. <coughs> shit, it's still there. Anyways, who had a lot of positions in the CCP? Like being the leader of the Communist Youth League from 1952 to 1966. Being the first party secretary of Shanghai in 1964, being the party secretary general in 1980, being the chairman of the CCP, but he helped ban that position to keep China away from Maoism in 1982. And he was the general secretary from 1982 to 1987. While he was in power, he did many things, like proposing economic and political reforms that would make mainland China into a legit democracy, like its neighbor, Taiwan. Attempted to make Tibet actually autonomous, trying to help the victims of the Cultural Revolution, and even doing the unthinkable, not making Japan a scapegoat to distract the people from the corruption of the CCP. I know. It's a crazy thing that he achieved, but he did it. All of these actions were attempts to make the People's Republic of China into the People's Republic of China. Unfortunately, in 1987, the CCP forced Hu to resign from General Secretary and tell everyone that he's a fucking retard and no one should ever listen to him again because the other party members seen it him as, you know, liberal. Get his house! Oh, help your customer! Fuck off! Fuck off! Ah! No, not that kind of liberal. I'm talking about this kind of liberal. Мы открылись миру, открылись, отказались от вмешательства в чужие дела. 
от использования войск за пределами страны. И нам ответили доверием, солидарностью и уважением. Мы стали одним из главных оплотов по перестройству современной цивилизации на мирных демократических началах. This caused the people to keep a close eye on him until his untimely death on April 15th, 1989 at Beijing, which was caused by a heart attack. At first, the 1989 Tiananmen protest was just a funeral for Hu Yellowbang, but as time kept passing, they got impatient with the CCP's bullshit and started to write for democracy. And also, unfortunately, his death negatively affected Tibet. Lisa, soon you will have a Chinese baby sister who will surpass you academically. I don't know about that. I'm considered pretty smart. Well, Tibet was considered pretty independent. How'd that work out? <gasps> Even though his death sparked the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest, the CCP tries to leech onto his legacy to make mainland China seem non-commie to the West. And that's why Xi Jinping, aka Winnie the Pooh, kind of praised him, but not really. Also, the CCP gave in to some of the people's demands by building a statue of him on the place where he was born on November 20th, 1915, Luang Huan. And they built that statue last year. But this isn't enough. Just ask Hong Kong. <laughs> Based on all the events that had happened throughout his lifetime and after his death, it just shows the world that whether the CCP centers the legacy of Hulu Yellowbang or not, the people will not forget 1989. This is the Socialist Roaster, signing out.